This is the plaintiff, Villar Jones. She took her dog to the defendant's pet grooming shop to get Kobe's hair cut, and the defendant used a razor and razor burn poor Kobe's testicles. Kobe hasn't been his normal self for months. The defendants won't even answer her calls, so she is suing the unscrupulous defendant for the $113.16 she's owed for vet bills and grooming costs. This is the defendant, Ashley Rotersheimer. She says the plaintiff left a message complaining their dog got burned, then filed a lawsuit on the very same day. If she did anything to injure the plaintiff's dog, she would have rectified the situation, but was never given the opportunity to, and the plaintiff refuses to send her the vet bills and is just being spiteful. She's accused of burning Kobe's private parts. The defendant has filed a counter suit for $950 for loss of business and defamation. All parties, please raise your right hand. The court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Marilyn Leanne is now presiding. Litigants have been sworn, Your Honor. Thank you, Douglas. You're welcome, ma'am. Ms. Jones, you have a pup. Is it a puppy? How old is this dog? He'll be one next month on the 14th. What kind of dog is Kobe? <laughs> He's a Yorkshire Terrier. Okay. Um, so you took Toby to be groomed by Petscapes, the, the defendant's company, and the first time things went okay, but what went wrong the second time? So I went to the groomer, and again, the lady's like, he did good, he did way better this time, was it no problems? So I get in the car to take my mama to her doctor's appointment, and Kobe, he li literally sits with me. So I move my um, seatbelt, and then he just yelled. So then I picked up and I looked at his his area, and it was red. So I called them back immediately, didn't nobody answer. Called them back again, nobody answered, and that's when I left my voicemail. Didn't nobody call me back until that Friday. With, mind you, I called them Monday, the day it happened, and then I called them Tuesday, twice. Nobody answered the phone, I left another voicemail. Nobody got back to me until Friday. When did you file the case? Um, On the day it happened, or did you? No, I'm just curious. I filed on 7:23. I have my paperwork right here. 7:23. And what was the day? And what was the day of the service? Um, 7:20. Okay, so it was three days later. And then when they call you back, what do you what do they say to you? And what do you say to them? They left. I didn't answer the phone because I've been calling you Monday and Tuesday. I called you all together. I'm gonna say four times. Nobody has got back to me or anything. Okay, Ms. Rodesheimer, why wasn't anybody calling her back? I was out of town at the time, and my groomer um, informed me about the um, incident. And then she um, let her know that, or called her back the next day, and she said that she didn't answer. So then she called her when she was in Friday, and she left a long voicemail. And then um, she never heard back. And then I wasn't going to be due back until Monday, which I had planned to call and rectify the situation Monday when I got back in town. Well, what ends up happening, and it, you know, it's, they say a picture is worth a thousand words. I mean, did you ever see the pictures or no? No, um, unfortunately I tried to call to the vet to get the vet bill, because that's usually what happens is you call the vet and then you get the bill and then the insurance would cover it. Usually, how often does this happen? I've never had this happen, but I've talked to other groomers <laughs> okay. where they let me know in this instance right. what usually would happen. And then, um, okay. so I called the vet directly to ask for the bill, and they denied me the right to see the bill because um, she would not right. allow them to release it. What am I looking at right there? Well, I know what I'm looking at. I'm looking at poor <laughs> Kobe's um, genitalia. Yeah. But is all is every color that I am seeing there a color that's from? I mean, is there any medicine or something on top of it right now, or There's is that how no it looks? Medicine on there is no medicine on top of him right now. That picture is a picture of no medicine. Okay, that's there's no dignity in these photos. Hold on. Um, could you tell there was something wrong with Kobe because you took some video? I I'm, I just take pictures and videos of everything. This is the day that... Let me see this right video. Here. This is the day you picked him up? Yes, ma'am, and I took him to the... Um, yeah, that's not that normal. No. Yeah, it's not normal for a dog to be hunched over like that, and it's clear the dog's in pain. Look, accidents happen, all right? But 
Mercifully, it wasn't worse. According to the vet, he had a nick on his nipple and another nick on his scrotum. And neither were bleeding at the time, but the scrotum was super irritated. So the vet just, you know, washed and put antibiotic and gave you a steroid spray. And how is Kobe doing now? He is doing good now. He's back to his normal self, but it took about three weeks for him to get back to his normal self, and that's not Kobe. Yeah. And then I, I have you had Kobe uh, back to a different groomer? Have you groomed Kobe since no. then? You're not planning on grooming Kobe ever again? No. I will figure it out myself. <laughs> okay. Damn, not go back to All right. no groomers. Okay. All right, Ms. Uh, Roddenscheimer, you have a counterclaim against her. You know, you're saying, oh, she just given us a chance. We would have made it right. But that doesn't sound like you because you've got a counterclaim against her. You want her to pay you $950. What happened there? You're suing for lost wages in the dog daycare, lost wages in grooming, defamation of character, cleaning fees of 10 bucks and a babysitter for 50 bucks. What on earth are you talking about? Um, that's for today because we weren't able to work because of the court. So we're losing out of the money with the daycare, the grooming. And then um, I have, I'm homeschooling my kids right now. So they would have been with me at work and um, I had to pay for a babysitter today and they had to take on those roles that I had written out for the uh, teaching. And then also, right, but why would um, I ever make her pay you if your groomer accidentally nicked her dog? I highlighted scrotum, suspect nick and clipper burn from grooming, mild inflammation secondary to the puppy licking at the area. So it's actually caused because of the secondary licking of the area. And it's even noted. Says who? On the Says who? When a dog, just a second, if I get a cut on my leg, my dog licks my cut. That's what animals do. They lick in order to heal. And there's some people who say that they have healing properties in those tongues. But that's not, you know, of but course a dog's going to lick it. What would you do if somebody nicked your testicles? You'd be licking them if you could. I mean, come on. Well, it's a secondary. It's, it's a secondary. Yes, but it happens. Especially if, but if for like getting I'm nicked. I'm sorry. I don't want to jump in. Who is that with you? That's the groomer. She was there. She's oh, the groomer. come on back in. Come on back in. And we need, we need to swear you in. Go ahead, please, Douglas. Swear her in. All right. Can I get you to raise your right hand, man, please? You solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God. Yes. Your Honor. Okay. Can you scoot just a little bit down so that I can actually see her? Is there a chair oh, you can sit? I don't mean to interrupt. Right. It's just I feel like it's being not represented fairly, and I have, I mean, my very first job ever was at a vet. I have nothing but experience with animals, daycare. I've been grooming for over 11 years, and I know what I'm doing, and the whole problem is she neglected her duty as a responsible pet owner to have the dog neutered in the first place and to have the dog well maybe she wants to breed the dog just it to wait wait no not breeding neutered she should have had it neutered because no i know what you said but dog. you don't get to decide if she neuters her dog no you don't I get know. to decide I'm just trying that to explain I mean, it's it's hard because with grooming it goes into a bunch of stuff like if you have an unaltered male dog their hormones are different so their urine is different it's more potent it's it causes if you've ever looked at a male dog that's unaltered, his sanitary area as he gets older becomes singed looking. That eventually happens over time, and then it can cause all this irritation because they just pee, and he's not housebroken. He did nothing but pee both times he was at the shop. He did nothing but pee, and we tried to explain okay, it the I, first time. I need you to take a breath a second. Nobody thinks you did I'm something sorry. on purpose it's, to the dog. I, I know you're him, upset, but I you need, I know you do, but you need to listen to me. I, I, as skilled as a person could be, they could make a mistake. I'm telling oh, yeah, you that the I'm vet, totally... stop and listen. I am telling you that the vet saw a nick on the testicles and a nick on a nipple. So it, it's not like she is making that up. And also I see the videos of the dog like in pain. I know it's an accident, but it's an accident that has to get paid for. This dog was never, a dog should be properly introduced at 12 weeks of age to grooming, to be adapted to it. Otherwise it's looked at as a punishment to the dog because you're throwing the dog in there. The dryers are loud. The bathing processes can be scary. It's all something. You don't wait till you're eight months old. We also have documentation before the dog ever came to us, ever, that he she was concerned about his private areas 
eight pages of documentation from the vet before the dog ever saw us back the very first time it was ever groomed. It was never groomed in life until it was eight months old, by the way. That's a okay, big no-no. Hold on. You take a breath. So oh, my Lord. Back. Take a breath. Now, I want to see the documents that were just in your hand. Hold on one second. This is all the vet stuff. I've got it. I've got it. Hold on. Switch places with your friends. Switch places, please. All right. Um, this is before the grooming. The owner is concerned that the pet is licking everything himself. Owner would also like patient's penis looked at. She doesn't think anything is wrong, just hasn't had a boy dog before. So I'm, I'm not seeing what she wanted me to see. What did she want me to see? Well, that, that was the part about um, her taking Oh, well, that doesn't say that. All right, look, guys, it happens, okay? You take your dog to get groomed, and your dog immediately... You look and there's cuts on the dog. Immediately, you take the dog to the vet. But she, that's she it. Didn't see any there's there nothing there. else. There Tell was... that person next to you to stop screaming. I mean it. We're in the middle of court right now. I can't just have her screaming every time she doesn't like what I say. All right. So it's easy. The harder part would be your part, which is I need to understand your counterclaim. Why would I make her pay you nine hundred and fifty dollars for having to answer? to something that it, I'm finding you culpable for. I'm a single mom. I know, I'm that's what happens when you cut a dog. They, yeah, I that's did what happens. I did not cut the dog, the dog caught the irritation. Okay, okay. I'm gonna need her out. I can't, I, she can't just, you know, this isn't like a, a sports game where she can just yell from the background. She needs to step out, have her step out, I'm not being heard how I should be, and I'm not being able to be explained, and I'm sorry for that dog for having to be with her for the rest of his life, because she is the one that has caused this. Ashley can play the right. now from her. I'm done. She never called me. Turn them case. off. I'll just rule on the counterclaim without getting their testimony because I'm not going to get yelled at. I mean, I, I'm, I'd like to hear you testify about the counterclaim. But if she keeps yelling, we're just going to end this. So can you explain to me the defamation? That's the thing I'm the most concerned about. Where did she defame you? Um, well, I just figured however many people she has told this instance to... Because we, again, don't feel that it was caused by us. We feel like it was a secondary issue. Um, so, like, the person she went to for the... Um, How did the two cuts happen to up? the dog? Right after getting groomed, the dog, according to the vet, saw the dog right on the same day that it got groomed. And there's a cut on the nipple and a cut on the testicles. How did it happen, do you think? By licking? You can't get a cut by licking. It's a nick. Right. And if she would have seen it, she would have let Viola know that because she looks the dog over plenty of times. And if something does occur, she usually is lets them know. So right the away. vet's lying when the vet says that the nipple was cut and the testicle was cut. The vet's lying. I didn't get to talk to the vet right. directly. Yeah. Well, I, I'm looking at it. Uh, you, you're guessing at the defamation, right? Because you, I, I thought she had posted something or she didn't post anything or. Oh, no. It's just. OK. Just All right. who she's had to speak through so far. Okay, she's entitled to speak. She has a right to speak. In fact, she has constitutionally protected free speech. If she lies about something or makes up something, that's different. So I don't care if she's told 500 people and I don't care if she writes a review because she's entitled to do that. People are entitled to do that. That doesn't make out a defamation case. Based on the incredibly quick response of Ms. Jones to take the dog to the vet that moment, which I would have done too if I had seen my dog hunch like this inside of a car, um, I, I don't think that there's any question that this happened at your grooming place. I think it's an accident, but your partner seems to feel that she's infallible, and that's just not the case. Um, if there had just been redness in the testicles, I understand, but we're talking about an actual nick both in the nipple and in the testicles, so no. Um, I'm finding in Ms. Jones's favor in the $113.16 that she's asking, plus, of course, her court costs. And as for um, your lawsuit against her, I'm finding against you. Verdict for the plaintiff. Good luck, folks. So it turned out to be a fascinating case. The plaintiff will get the $113 back. Ms. Rodesheimer, the defendant, let me ask you, what are you thinking right now? I just feel bad for my groomer because she didn't get to, you know, fully express herself. And she said that she reached out to Viola and explained the situation, but she didn't get to actually directly talk to her. So it would have been better if we could have figured this out out of court in the long run.
Obviously, you failed in your attempt to get $950 in your, uh, your, your lawsuit against her. That didn't work for you. What do you think about that? Well, that's just hurts another blow. Because of COVID, we've had to take time off, and the business is struggling already, so we had to take another full day off for the court. So, Okay. <laughs> Ms. Jones, let me know what you think about the outcome of the case. You must be elated now, because this turned out to be quite an argument that they were having, wasn't it? Yes. Uh, you see, I just let them argue with their self. I'm not going to argue with something that I have proof of. And this would have never happened if they would have just answered my call that same day when I called them. I should not have to call you two days in a row, four times, two, two times each day. And then you call me back on a Friday. No, this would have never happened. I just wanted to talk to y'all and see what happened. Didn't nobody call me. Because if somebody called me, we would not be going through this right now. I just wanted answers. That's all I wanted. Well, thank you very much. Good luck to you and congratulations. Ah, fascinating case. Let's see what the judges think. Here is another session now of After the Verdict. Well, um, those pictures were hard to look at. They and were. The, the photo, the video that you had of Kobe. Oof. That Yeah, really. that actually made me feel even worse than the picture, believe it or not. Um, right. The, the dog looked like it was in such pain. I mean, you do not play with that plaintiff. Oh, no. She is not playing. You return no. her calls. Oh, boy. Miss Jones, uh, she hounded them yeah. for three days, and uh, she didn't get satisfaction, and she raced straight and to the And that's it. Good for her. Bang. You know, right. maybe you should be returning the phone calls of someone. These are cell phones. I mean, it's right. not like they're not hearing her. Right. And, you know, I understand, like, the groomer feels bad because she feels like she's being portrayed badly. But, you know, accidents happen. I mean, it's uh, not... Absolutely. And she might be a great groomer, and I'm yeah. sure she loves animals. She's a but, terrible witness. She can't shut up. Not, she can't, she not can't calm witness. down, but she, no. she could be a great groomer. It's and just, no one's perfect. There's yeah. no perfection in this world anyway. No. So uh, no. we'll have to wait for the next, perhaps, to yeah. find out about that. But certainly the, the greatest manifestation of Ms. Jones' love for her dog She's never going to groom him again. She's never going to groom him hook. again. Well, it's Nothing. either that or no not laser neutering hair him. I'm removal, not sure. No laser anything, right? He's, he's in the clear. So Greg wants to know this. Hey, Harvey, the community I live in hired a tree trimmer to cut some palm trees, and several limbs landed on his carport roof, damaging it. He saw them do it. They deny it. So what should he do? If there are witnesses, that's going to really help. If there is any kind of witness who saw immediately before, during, or after, that's gonna be really relevant. But the other thing is this, if the guy's cutting trees down and cutting branches down, and there's a branch that lands on the neighbor's property, a lot of times judges can deduce what actually happened. And it's pretty clear that it must have been the tree trimmer. And if the tree trimmer did it negligently, the tree trimmer is responsible. And that will do it for this case, litigants, for the next case inside the courtroom.